All right, in this example, we're told we have air at a stagnation pressure of 7.2 megapascals, and we're also given the stagnation temperature, and it flows isentropically through a converging, diverging nozzle with a given throat area. So let me sketch that out here. So here's my converging, diverging nozzle. It flows going this way, and we're told what the throat area is, so we know what that is. And I, as I mentioned before, we're given the stagnation pressure and temperature far upstream here. As we're told the entire flow is isentropic. Determine the speed and the mass flow rate at the downstream section where the Mach number is 4.0. So somewhere here, I'm not sure where, but somewhere here, the Mach number is equal to 4. Okay, so first of all, one thing that you'll notice is since we're starting from stagnation conditions and we're reaching supersonic conditions here, we have to go through a throat, um, and that throat has to be the sonic area. The, the flow in here, because the starting from stagnation conditions and the area is decreasing, the flow in here will be subsonic, but, but in, with increasing speed. Since it, the flow becomes supersonic here, obviously the Mach number is 4, since it becomes supersonic, it must be uh, Mach number 1 right at the throat, so the, the throat area will be the sonic area. And then the flow becomes supersonic in this diverging section. Okay, so... We want to determine ultimately the speed and mass flow rate at the downstream section where the Mach number is 4. So to get the speed, since I'm given the Mach number, I know that the Mach number is related to the flow speed and the speed of sound. So I want to get the flow speed, so that'll be the speed of sound times the Mach number. The speed of sound is just the square root of KRT, where K is the specific heat ratio, R is the gas constant for air, T is the absolute temperature. So in order for me to find the velocity, I need to find the temperature. I know the, the, I know the specific heat ratio for air is 1.4. I know the gas constant for air is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. I know that the Mach number is given to be 4. So I need to find the temperature at that location right here. So to do that, I'll just use our uh, stagnation temperature ratio, that, that T over T naught. That'll be a function of the Mach number. And here, I know my T naught. The T naught is given in the problem statement as 1100 Kelvin. It's already an absolute temperature. The Mach number, where I want to find the temperature, is equal to 4. And a specific heat ratio, of course, is 1.4. So we can solve this for the temperature. So this will be the temperature where the Mach number is equal to 4. And that comes out to be 261.9 Kelvin. Now that I know that temperature, I can plug it back in up here to find the flow velocity. And when I do that, flow velocity comes out to be 1298 meters per second. So that's the flow velocity right at this point. So we know the temperature there is 262 Kelvin. We know the velocity is uh, 1300 meters per second. All right, and then the next part of the problem is determine the mass flow rate at the downstream section where the Mach number is 4. So I want to find the mass flow rate through here. So one thing I could do is I could just use the choked flow mass flow rate because I know that uh, we have choked flow here. The Mach number at the throat is equal to 1 because, because we know that we go from subsonic to supersonic conditions. So the mass flow rate here will be the choked flow mass flow rate. And if I write that out, the mass flow rate is just going to be the choked mass flow rate. And then if you go to the formula sheet for what that expression looks like, it's probably too much to remember. But if you go to the formula sheet, it'll look like the following. So there's our expression for the mass flow rate, for the choked flow mass flow rate. And you'll see that well, we need some information here. Uh, we, we know the stagnation pressure. Because the flow is isentropic everywhere, the stagnation pressure won't change. So our p naught. let me go ahead and write that out. p naught will be the given stagnation pressure right here. It's an absolute pressure, 7.2 megapascals. The stagnation temperature, we just said a moment ago, was 1,100. Kelvin. 
specific heat ratio and the gas constant for air we already know. The only other thing is the sonic area, but the sonic area we already know is um, it's just the, um, the area at the throat because we know that it goes from subsonic conditions to supersonic conditions, so the throat area will be the, um, the sonic area because the Mach number is 1 there. So that, that area at the throat was 0 0.01 square meters. So we have everything we need, we can calculate the mass flow rate then. So if you do that, the mass flow rate comes out to be 87.7 .7 kilograms per second. It's, it's a pretty big number. Okay, so that's, that's uh, how we could find the mass flow rate. There's another way you could do it. Um, so I just used the formula for the choked flow mass flow rate, but you know a different way to do it is you could just do it directly from our usual formula for the mass flow rate, just the density times the velocity times the area. And let's just calculate the density in the area at the location where the Mach number is equal to 4. So we're going to just find the density in the area there. So to find the density, what we can do is, um, since we already know the temperature at that location, I could find the density, well, you know what, I, I could find the density um, using the ideal gas law. Let me do it that way. The density would look like, would be related to the pressure and the temperature. I already calculated the temperature, it's right up here, where the Mach number was 4. Let me calculate the pressure there. So to find the pressure there, it would I would use my isentropic stagnation pressure ratio expression. So I can find the pressure where the Mach number is 4, and when I do that, that comes out to be 4.742 times 10 to the 4th pascals absolute. The stagnation pressure was the 7.2 megapascals. Mach number is 4. So there's the pressure. I already found the temperature, like I said, up here. So now we could find the density in that calculation. Um, I actually didn't work it out, but, but you could find the density and plug it in there. The velocity we already found, that was right up here. To find the area where the Mach number is 4, so we're trying to find the area at this location, I can use my sonic area ratio. So that looks like the following. Again, you'd probably have to refer to your formula sheet for this. It's probably more than you want to memorize. Not too hard to memorize, though. Oops, I've got the, that backwards. So there is our sonic area ratio. Here, I know A star is just equal to the area of the throat, which is the 0 0.01 square meters. I know, of course, the Mach number is 4. And so I could solve for the area. When you do that, the area comes out to be 0 0.107 square meters. Now that I have the area, the uh, expression for the density, which involves the pressure and temperature, and I already calculated the velocity earlier, I can calculate the mass flow rate, and when you work out the numbers, it comes out to be 87.7 again. So it's just another way to get to the same answer. So there are different ways you can do this. Lastly, let me go ahead and sketch out a TS diagram for this flow. It's a pretty simple one, since the flow is entirely isentropic. So we start at stagnation conditions up here. So here's our stagnation temperature, our stagnation pressure. So we're starting at stagnation conditions. We go through sonic conditions. So that would be T star, would be P star. It's all isentropic, so we just go vertically. It's supposed to pass right through here. So that's this is right at the throat here. And then we go to that uh, location where the, the Mach number is 4. And so that's at an even lower temperature than T star. So, and the pressure will be lower there as well. So here's where our Mach number, so we're, the, fl the flow is just going from stagnation conditions up here down through the throat to our final state down here. So this is where our Mach number is equal to 4. And it's all occurring isentropically, so we're just moving along a, a vertical line here. So that's a pretty simple TS diagram for this kind of flow. Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and end this example.